Stepping into Moses Becerra's workshop at his home in Comac is like stepping back in time. My profession is a uh, antique Japanese sword polisher. I work on art swords, antique swords that were used during the samurai era. I've been doing uh, sword polishing now for over 25 years. I, uh, earlier on in my life, I uh, went to Japan and uh, met with people in this field and I decided to apprentice. And I would travel back and forth to Japan for a number of years and apprentice with some very well-known teachers and, and they were very kind to me and they taught me a lot. And I'm still learning, it's always a learning process. A learning process that has been passed down for centuries. Many of the swords that I work on go as far back, and I have worked on swords as far back as the Kamakura, or seven, eight hundred years old. Um, so these swords are not only priceless, um, but they're also very, very important art objects that people collect and, 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 and care for. They know that they're spending thousands to restore them. But it doesn't matter because this sword is going to be left to somebody else and there. We're only caretakers at this point in time. And because these swords carry with them stories of lives from centuries past, Becerra says his work becomes more than just an art form or a business. I believe there's a very strong spiritual aspect associated with the Japanese sword. Obviously, men uh, died in battles with them. Uh, people carried them for protection. Um, it was uh, more important to a samurai his sword than anything else. So there is a spirit involved in this Japanese sword. I mean, I, I pick up these swords and, and, and without sounding odd, some of them do feel different than others. Some of them uh, cooperate with me more. Some of them don't. Some of them are there's, they're, they're just give up to me different vibes. Uh, again, it's uh, the history behind it is, is, is in them. And the careful process of revealing that history usually takes between one and a half and two weeks per sword. This is done by using a series of rare natural stones that vary in gradation from coarse at the very start to fine in the finishing steps. These are Chikomori stones that we use for polishing swords normally. This particular stone that you see here it's basically the same stone that you see here, broken down into thin little slivers. And there's glue, there's rice uh, paper and lacquer glued in the back to hold them together. We grind these down very thin to do the finishing work. It's almost paper thin. And throughout each stage of polishing, strict concentration is a must, as the slightest mistake could ruin the sword in essence destroying the rich history that Becerra worked so hard to reveal with each of his stones. When I polish a sword, what I'm trying to achieve is to bring out of that sword what it was intended to be. The same smith can make three different swords. So it's not like he made everything like uh, exactly the same. So I want to try to bring out what that sword was meant to be. The steel, the tempering, the, the shape of the sword. Um, the age in which it was made, because all of these things play a key factor in the way in the way we polish a sword. If I polish a sword, for example, that was made in the 1500s, like a sword that was made in the 1900s, it's not going to look right. And that attention to detail is also what keeps Becerra striving to perfect his art and honor his place as one of the most recent caretakers of these centuries-old relics. To me, what keeps me doing this every day and, the, and the, the joy that I get from this is twofold. Number one, it's that I feel that I'm doing something that's always a, a learning process for me and is never going to end. I will never graduate from this school of learning. So that to me is inspiring and, and, and it drives me, it drives me day and night. Second fold is that, you know, that I'm doing a, a, a job for someone or a project for somebody and when they get it back, they are completely satisfied, completely happy. Once I have a customer with me for a short time, they don't usually leave. So I'm very happy to keep people like that around and have, ha make them happy with what I do. I'm very fortunate to be able to wake up every morning and do what I do.